Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 128, and today we will be discussing English words used in other languages, which is also called a loan word in the world of second language studies and linguistics. A loan word is basically a word that you use in a foreign language into your own language, and sometimes it has the same meaning, other times it develops a new meaning. So we'll be discussing that later this episode. So this episode is the perfect episode for you. If you're not the greatest language learner, but maybe you're traveling to some of these countries and want to use some cool English terminology to speak with the locals. So we're looking forward to it. And I'm curious to see what Jared has for us today. So without further ado, my good buddy, Jared, what's going on, Jared? Hello. Yes. You know, you can act, it's surprising the large list of words that sort of translates from one language to another, uh, like from English to another language. So for, uh, you know, our multicultural, multilinguistic audience out there, out, out there, park yourself down there and uh, take a listen. Everyone understands what park means. So I tried to, uh, you know, find one that was a, a great example of a loan word. All right. Hey, listen, listen. We don't get paid for this. Let's just be clear. Spread a little love. Uh, but we could. And it all starts with you following us on Instagram, on Translate a Little Podcast. We're going to be Instagram famous. You just wait. Listen, Mom. I can do it. <laughs> you can also follow us on Twitter. We can be Twitter famous, too. That's cool. Spread a little love. Untranslatable1, the number one. You can email us, untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. You can uh, gmail.com. You can untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. I realized I, I rushed through that. I don't know why I did that, and I wanted to get it right. You can slide into our DMs or email us uh, Song of the Pod recommendations. You can give us untranslatables, which are idioms, sayings, proverbs, uh, that don't make any sense and uh, if you translate them directly to, directly to English but they do have some sort of meaning uh, or you can obviously spread a little love with five star reviews on iTunes and Stitcher Bajalsta. that's Russian for please uh, you know I always get a kick out of uh, looking behind you and seeing it, it either be uh, you know bright outside or dark outside depending on when we record right now it's uh, nighttime here for me and morning for you. Um, yep. I, I think I'm just starting to get used to uh, this whole time difference thing. I think you and I are starting to get, uh, obviously, you know, as two uh, working podcasters, a lot of our stuff has a lot of our, uh, what we do is coordinating time tape schedules and talk oh, about absolutely. times when we're free and times when we're going to do stuff and times where we're going to be gone. And um, it was pretty easy, I think, when you're in the Czech Republic because I was so used, I was used to that time difference because I've been to that time zone right. and stuff. But this is a very new time zone and it's v like completely different, you know, 12 hours. And so we, in the beginning, we had some miscommunications with uh, trying to schedule times just because it's yep, like, wait, 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 absolutely. are you talking about your time or my time? Wait, wait, you're ahead. So that means your morning is my night <laughs> on yep. Wednesday, but you're your thursday and so um i think i'm just starting to get used to it are, are you do you think your body is starting to adjust fully to just being on a different time zone now being opposite of what you're usually used to i th i would think a hundred percent because um well i got here on the 20 what 25th 26th of august let me look real quick uh let's see here i'm pretty sure 26th of august which was a Monday, and I have been here for two weeks, which means 14 days. And as my colleague told me, which I would agree with her, she said that um, she said that for every hour of time difference, you need days to overcome it. So oh. if there's a six-hour time difference, so you two need weeks six makes, days. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I've also been noticing that. I don't wake up at 5 a.m. anymore or 6 a.m. naturally. This morning, I woke up with an alarm. Yesterday, I didn't set an alarm. Well, I set an alarm for 8. I wanted to watch the MSU game, uh, MSU football game against Western Michigan, the second game of the season. And I can really only watch the night games here because of the 12-hour time difference. So the game mm -hmm. started at 7.30 p.m. in Michigan, which meant 7.30 a.m., and so I was like, well, I don't really care that much about the, the first quarter. I want to sleep in. So I, I slept in 
Well, I was planning on sleeping in until 8 uh, a.m., woke up at 7.30 naturally, and I was like, well, I'm already up, so I'm going to try <laughs> to watch the game. So then, you know, I, uh, I went on to Fox Sports. Shout out to our buddy Brad for letting me use his login info. Mm. Um, lifesaver there for sure. Um, so now big we, ups now, to Brad. Now, now Brad's being watched. You just put him on blast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway. Slipping so, on gator piss. So I got up at 7, uh, 7.30 yesterday naturally and without an alarm. But the funny thing was is that um, the game would buffer. So I could see like 10 seconds of it and then it would oh, buffer no. for 10 seconds. Oh, no. And it was like torture. So I was like, you know what? I'm still kind of sleepy. I'm going to go back to bed and try again when I get up. So mm. I went back to sleep for, because I was still a little drowsy. Or so find I went back a replay to bed. of it. You could probably find a replay of it. Right. Well, I, I need to see it real time, Jared, if I can. Oh, so uh, I'm one of those people. So <laughs> I, mean, I went I back it. to bed. I, get it. I went back to bed, set my alarm for 10 o'clock, woke up at 930. And uh, then the third quarter, it was about eight minutes into the third quarter. MSU was up by like 30 points. So I figured, all right, they're probably going to win this one anyways, because mm-hmm. they do have a solid defense. Um, it's just getting the points on the board is what at least they struggled with last season. So anyways, I got up and then it was working. So the thing about China is sometimes the internet works fine. Other times there's going to be lots of buffering to the point where it's just like... I actually, right. It's funny that you say that because I happened to ask you about that before we started recording. I was yep. like, "It seems like a like it seems like you're a little uh, shoddy there last last time there, buddy." But mm-hmm. now look at you, you're wonderful. By the way, Ho- hopefully crystal clear. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really just depends. I mean, there have been times when I Facetime with my parents since I've been over here. Sometimes it works fine. Other times we'll be five minutes into talking and then you know, either I'll freeze or they'll freeze Mm -hmm. or a lot of times the video will freeze, but the audio doesn't freeze. So it's always really funny. I'm telling my parents something and they go, you're frozen. And then I keep talking and I'm like, but you can hear me. Right. And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I understand that I've been there. Yeah. Have you, um, so it's, it's uh, a Monday for you. Have you, um, been experiencing the, like, well, like, excuse me, that's not what I want to ask you, excuse me. What Have you been keeping occupied during the weekend? That's what I'm looking for. I was just relaxing this weekend. I didn't really do much, played some guitar, well, um, watched the MSU game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to do, like, some budget stuff for a couple conferences I'll be going to in a few weeks. So I finished up my budget reports for those. Wow. Finished up uh, lesson budget planning. Um, ate some tasty food. Made my first, I'm not a great cook, so I made my first pizza here yesterday. Not really made, it was like a frozen pizza I okay, popped I in the say. toaster oven. <laughs> but it was, it was really good, though. Half of it was like a pepperoni pizza with corn on top, of course. I was just the about other to half, ask about the corn. Yep. Stop putting corn on pizza, half, people. We don't do that. <laughs> and, send and the, one and the person other half over. Was, send one person over for three days to do a pizza tour in any city. You'll find it'll no be corn. corn everywhere, right? Don't it, go to California yeah. Pizza Kitchen though, because they might have corn on their pizza. Right, they might. Um, but yeah, so half of it was pepperoni and corn. The other half was like a supreme pizza with chicken on top. Um, okay, so like peppers. Well, really, peppers, onions, and chicken. But so it was pretty it was good. One frozen pizza, but it was half half. Half half. Yep. They mm-hmm. should do that here. They don't. I, you they you can't find that here. You really that's, can't. That, no. That's a great idea. Like maybe like your two mm-hmm. most pop. Like you know, you could do some sort of, some sort of statistic stuff. Figure out who buys this, who buys that. Let's put to- those together. See if we can somehow do. That's a good idea. Oh, absolutely. And I'll, I'll tell you what, Jared. I've eaten a lot of frozen pizzas. Throw them in the oven in my college days, in my Czech Republic days, and now in my China days. Just in general, um, you don't have to. In you, general, I, it's interesting that you try to break it down to different moments of your life when really those right. moments just end up being like the, every moment. Pretty of your much, life. yeah. The last, yeah, the last <laughs> eight years of my life or so, exactly. Um, but but anyways, um, oh my god. I will say I will say that Tombstone in the states is my favorite, and they I love when I can find it. Their thin crust. Hold on. Tombstone pizzas. If you're ever being lazy and don't feel like making your own pizza, Tombstone pizzas in the States. Um, 
an unofficial affiliate of the Untranslatable <laughs> Podcast. Um, oh, really? But yeah. I've seen those before. I've never tried them. They're pretty good. They're not bad. All right. Um, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. The other funny thing is... It's uh, so flimsy to me, though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but as long as they're frozen, you're good. Um, but the funny thing <laughs> is here, Jared, is, is this pizza um, had the instructions in English on the back. I didn't even oh. realize that when I bought it and I went to go cook them because I don't have an oven, but I have a toaster oven. And so I went to go cook it and I was like, holy crap, it's all in English. I actually can decipher how to cook this without, because like the ramen that I've made here, was I've kind of like guessed. Half, I mean, it's, like, was, there, was it in Chinese too? Yeah, it was in Chinese, but also in English. Yeah. Okay. And that's Ramen's actually the easy, name of the though. pizza. Ramen is easy. You just kind of put water in and tur- put it in. You have a microwave, don't you? Well, here, here it's weird that the little ramen thing, I'm pretty sure it has a picture of a microwave and like a slash through it, meaning like don't put it in the microwave. So you put it in the pot. So I put it in a pot and boil water. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. even easier than I would say. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But what I'm hoping to do now is get my ramen because it's cheap um, and I still don't get paid for another week and a half. So I'm living on what I brought over here. I mean, I could take money out of my American account, but there's like fees and other crap. So I'm just going to try to go as long as I can with what I have still left in cash. Um, I feel you. And is so it, I'm hoping to in, do in a more weird complicated way? ramen stuff. Is it what in a weird mean? way? Is it in a weird way like a fun, um, not fun, yeah, fun challenge to sort of a uh, bit. live as especially frugally for the next couple a of days? Bit. Well, well, I kind of did that over the summer because I didn't have any income coming in for the most part. So um, it's just a continuation of the lifestyle I was living over the summer. Um, That's true. Which is, which is if you're, not, if you're a, a high school teacher or a middle school teacher, elementary school teacher, you obviously will get salary during the summer. If you teach at college or university, um, as far as I know, well, at least if you're an adjunct, you only get you're paid one teach. Jack. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You're not but yeah, but for I will. Us. I will tell you this though, Jared. You asked about food. Um, occasionally, I will go out to eat because it's not too expensive here to go out to eat. Um, it seems like it is more expensive than Czech Republic. Where, where though. you go? Um, that's a good. Qu- I've been thinking about that. I'm not sure. I think. I think Western style food for sure is more expensive here. So if you okay. want to get burgers or pizza or whatever, but well, if Western you go for Chinese food, food, Western style food in Czech Republic is just food. Though. Food. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm, I'd be curious to see if Chinese food is more expensive in the Czech Republic or it's more expensive here. I would imagine it's yeah. more expensive in the Czech Republic. Um, but like I, I walked by a place yesterday that I'm hoping to try one of these days that was the, the good key where you can tell that the food quality is good as if it's packed in there. If it's packed in there, that means that people like it. Usually the food quality is uh, good. That's kind oh, of the way Oh, you mean like packed with people in the store? Right. Okay. Right. okay. In the restaurant. Yeah. Restaurant, and so there was gotcha. this one where I walked by and a lot of it, I have no idea what most of these symbols mean. And if it's a smaller symbol, like on a label, like this lemonade I have here that has all these Chinese characters, um, then my phone can translate it. But if it's really big, like up on like a sign for the restaurant, it's too oh. big for my camera to translate it. Like it, it can um, read like probably, fonts. Right. Right. Okay. But like, like signs in terms of like a big sign. And most of the restaurants here have, you know, a, a sign over top of it, that, just like we do in the States, you know, and it has the name of the right. restaurant or, or, or mm-hmm. whatever they sell. So basically I kind of go off around here, like what pictures I can decipher and hope that, you know, this is pork, not like chicken feet or hope that this is, you know, beef, not, I'm not a big do fish you, guy. So it's not like squid or something. Go ahead. Do you have like a tourist face when you walk around? Like, do you kind of have think, that sort of looking th- up at everything? I think I uh, did. Look. I, th- I think I did, but now I've been walking around kind of the same place for quite a while that I, right. I kind of know where things are. Um, and I, I'll tell you this, Jared. I, I was telling you about that ice cream place with the crazy color ice cream our last yes. episode. Yes. I went there yesterday and I got some. And I'll, I'll post this on the gram and, oh wow! Uh, That's real grammable. That is very yeah. grammable. Yeah. Did you get and one so of you like p- poking it on your nose or something? 
Oh, I should have done that. I should have done that. <laughs> I did get a picture. I did get a selfie because you always give me shit when I post pictures of oh, things and not of my face. So. I don't mind. I don't mind if you don't post your face, but I do mind when you post beautiful pictures of your face and then um, on my own personal and, then, yeah, and, and deprive, don't put it on deprive that. everyone else right. of that beauty. But this was this was what's cool about this though, Jared. So if you look at the picture, I'll describe it to our listeners. So, so you see an ice cream cone with this pretty pink and dark blue. Scoot I think over a, dark, a little yeah, bit dark, to the uh, dark yeah, there blue you go. Um, swirl. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not really a swirl. It's literally like half and half. Half and half um, right down the middle. Yeah. And, and, then, and then there's a black cone. But over the cone is this beautiful little guard to drop any drippings from getting on your fingers. I need Why that. Why we don't have this in the States, I don't know. China is definitely up on this one over the U.S. in yes. terms of ice cream eating technology. Um, <laughs> and so, so that betcha. was pretty, pretty cool. Um, at first, like when they handed me this, I'm like, what the heck is this? And then when I was eating it, I was like, oh, that's what that is. Yes, but I'm just that- curious, Jared, what do you think these flavors oh, are? Tap it. Your phone's going dark. Oh, uh-oh. There we go. Uh, skin, um, I'd say the blue. Uh, they don't have blue moon. In, they don't. Uh, That's a Michigan thing. In China. <laughs> um, I would say the blue is... Oh, man. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, the blue... The pink is cotton candy. And the blue is... Uh, the bl- Oh, man. I, uh, I, um... Also the cotton blue. candy. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I want to go with. <laughs> right. So as an American, I would have guessed so the tough. same when I saw like this. like bubble gum or something like that. Right. It's actually, the blue is sea salt and the pink is berry. Just general berry? I, that's, I ordered it because I was curious. <laughs> like what... What, kind what they of meant berry? by berry. There are a lot right. of berries like out there. Like strawberry, blueberry. Yeah. Right. But yeah, just general, as far as I know, just general berry. How was, was really the sea good. salt? The it berry was also I pretty kind of tasty. Imagine. The sea salt was good. It was a little bit sweet, a little bit salty. Uh, and that paired with the berry was really good. You could get sea salt on its own. But um, I just figured that'd be kind of a weird flavor. Now, I understand again, I, that. I understand that combination though, because they do say that like um, it's kind of like if you're if you're trying to make and something. And there are the sp- characters, by the way, too. You guys scoot over a so, little bit again. Oh, sorry. And so uh, that's a little more. That's keep, keep a little more. Keep going. There we go. Good job. And then you and went so back. And so that's. Again. Oh, sorry. And well, anyways, basically, so this was outside of the store, and I was able to put my phone up to the characters. Um, okay. But then they also have a matcha tea flavor, which I'm going to try you sometime. Love matcha tea. I do. And then we they have a matcha, here. half matcha tea, half vanilla. The funny thing is, though, when I did the translation on the on the characters, vanilla said original, which I figured was probably vanilla. Yeah, but it that makes matcha sense. Matcha tea and original. Yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. Sea right. salt. That's interesting. Oh, what I was yeah. going to say was that is a good way to like spice foods is if you add like some sweetness to a spice, it like makes the spiciness pop a little bit. Right. Uh, so maybe that's the same concept with putting salt on top of ice cream. Like it makes it taste a little sweeter. Yeah, could um, be. It was delicious though, man. Absolutely delicious. Um, that's cool, man. I love hearing these exploring yep. stories. And, and I got to do some people like. watching. Any good so people I can, watching? I can't complain. Um, Have you uh, challenged uh, challenged those people in front of your apartment complex to any some some sort of challenge at this point to prove that you're tough? Not yet. (laughs) Um, But it's funny. There is one guy. There's like a a basketball hoop near this like pedestrian area. It's kind of like a pedestrian slash shopping area. I see the same dude there every night shooting hoops. One of these days, I'm going to go there with my basketball shorts and a gym shirt on and shoot some hoops with him. Because yes. his, his, form, his form could use a little work. I don't know if they taught him oh, beef no. in the States, but his form could use a little work. Uh-oh. So we'll... Now, now <laughs> is that how I, you're going to make friends Jordan, going out there and being but, like, listen, son, I'm going behind him and like, like right. uh, wrap it over right, your bend arm. Bend your knees, <laughs> elbow, <laughs> eyes, follow through. You need the beef. That's right. I still remember from gym class, Jared. <laughs> oh my I gosh. will say this: I'm not I'm not a great basketball player, but I can make a jump shot. Um, okay, that's for sure. I okay. can make a jump shot. But yeah, I, I, I lack. Well, I lack many aspects of, of what makes a good basketball player, but one of them especially is the stamina, for sure. 
Oh yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of yeah. But you played soccer. Yeah. Well, granted, I don't have the stamina for soccer right now to, either. That's, that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. <laughs> Maybe I would when I was peak soccer. But it is like a different sort of. I think e- even though it is like both of them involve like different like long term stamina. I think even though it, there's still different styles of st- stamina for some oh, reason. Oh, I would agree. I would agree. Um, and so I still think it is an adjustment. All right. We're, this th- is not. Th- we're, we're not yeah. sports professionals here. Let's just uh, spread a little that's love. True. Let's do it. Do you have any shoutouts today? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm all sorry. Right. Well, I have everyone. three of them. I know it's I'm all right, Jared. You. I always, I always ask just because I don't want to cut you off. Um, no, and that's usually nice. When you do have shoutouts, shoutouts, not shoutouts. I'm very proud. I guess still got my mind on do. sports. You do usually have some really good ones. So I got three oh, of them you. for you today, Jared. So my first one um, goes out to all of the people in the Bahamas. This is a cool headline, Jared. Jet skiers save 100 people trapped in flooded homes in the Bahamas, which I just like when I read this headline at first, I was just picturing like <laughs> this like hero <laughs> rolling up on a jet ski, like saving people from like the rooftops of their houses, which is kind of what happens. You uh, imagine what people happened. like terrified and like sad to see their house be uh, destroyed by a, by a hurricane and flood. And you just <laughs> people like sadly climbing out of their windows hopping onto these uh jet skis and then like as they're on the jet ski like being taken to safety they're just like ah, i mean i can't be that mad and they just like, <laughs> <laughs> like they just I like mean, slowly this big smile forms on their face as they ride on the back of this jet ski like ah, this is pretty fun it's like all right listen, i mean jet ski I know it's riding bad now but with some fun. of that insurance money i'm getting a jet ski <laughs> <laughs> right, right, um, Well, I think uh, it was Daniel Tosh, uh, the comedian, who said, like, he's like, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you jet ski. And, I mean, <laughs> try to frown on a jet ski was, like, along the lines of what he said. That's probably um, what made me think about that. Oh, that's just a, such a hilarious thought to me. Oh, my God. Right. Uh, that right. is very nice. Now, what's, and- what's crazy about this, though, Jared, is if you think about it, like, a jet ski can't carry a ton of weight... And so people had to make multiple trips to save families and friends. Um, and then it, it became, there became an issue because a lot of the jet skis were starting to run out of fuel. And mm-hmm. so people um, kind of came together in the Bahamas and helped um, give these jet ski riders fuel and food and water and everything. And uh, I think it's really great. And they have still been going and saving people. And I think this is a really innovative way as well. I mean, during that, a hurricane, you know, any car is not going to work. So what are you going to do? You know, you need a boat or you need a jet ski. And jet so skis are it, small enough. Go ahead. Sorry. Jet, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I think you're just about to explain what I was curious about. Well, jet skis are small enough and light enough to get through some of these difficult places right. um, where there's a lot of tight spaces and stuff. So I think it's really great. Um, and they look cool. They do. But yeah, so that's really awesome. And uh, we send our yes. love to all the jet skiers and people Spread in the Bahamas love. that have been displaced and negatively affected by the hurricane. Uh, my next yes. one, Jared, goes out to our home state of Michigan. I oh. think we've discussed this. You betcha. Maybe we did a while ago. But um, there are a lot of state parks now that have signs with Bob Ross's face on them that say happy planting or happy little trees. Now, what's cool about this, though, Jared, is that Michigan has planted a thousand happy little trees in honor of Bob Ross, which I think is great. Now, granted, See, we've, that we've had way some more other realistic than hearing people right. say, like hearing like the thirty-eight million trees have been planted. Right. I was. You took the words right out of my mouth, Jared. I was just going to say it may not be as impressive as some of the other countries that I have, that. you know, put out millions of trees. But it's a start, and I think it's really great. Yes. And the interesting thing too, Jared, is a lot of these trees come from saplings that have been grown by prison inmates. So I think it's pretty cool. And this is part of an initiative called the Prison Grow Program um, to help Michigan State Parks, which I think is really Dude. great. Um, so yeah. yeah, I actually just bought um, a bunch of house plants today, and it makes a house so much nicer and so much more homely just to have like plants around. Do you uh, know I, by chance it, which house plants are good for like air quality? Because I've been thinking about getting a couple from hmm. my apartment here in Jinan. I don't know what what are good for air quality. We got some. I don't know. I don't know what mine are good for like that. 
we got some succulents, you know, just like little plants that take a tiny amount of water. Right. We got um, it's called a snake, snake, snake plant, snake plant. Okay. We got a, a snake okay. plant, which it's it sort of it's like green and it sort of like shoots like a few stalks that shoot straight up. We got oh another small plant was a uh, eucalyptus, I think. Okay. Which which you can it, use it almost, as like lotion and stuff. Uh, like you can use the insides of it. I'm I've heard you sure, can use them you? somehow. I don't know how you can use them, but I heard yeah. you can. It's like a little small, little like kind of almost cactusy looking thing. Right. Um, and then we also got um, one sort of like t- little tree looking thing. I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry, people. I'm not a botanist. And we also got another plant that's uh it kind of it's 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 just like leafy and the leaves look cool because mm-hmm. they kind of are like tiger striped oh nice and it, and, it, nice. and it's uh it's maybe like a medium-sized thing like it fits nicely on like a like a like a table so oh cool it's, it's nice Very i've nice. never really had like a plants but uh i highly recommend it do you have another nice. shot i do but unfortunately my it, the page was loading and now it has like gone where it's like it doesn't work. So I'm oh, going to try to do okay. this from memory. Oh, so okay. Jared, Jared likes to ask me questions. I'm going to tell him for once, right. do not ask me questions. All or right. you that's can, fair. but I might no, not have the fair. answer for him. So my next shout out goes out to the University of Tennessee, the Vols or volunteers, um, and uh, a, a student in Tallahassee, Florida. And unfortunately, I don't have his name up because the page isn't loading. But he was, I think he was a first or second grader in Tallahassee, Florida. And they had like a wear your favorite college sports team to school day. And he didn't have a Vol shirt. So he did what any creative child would do and had an orange shirt and then taped, uh, uh, drew his own logo basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, if I'm not you, laughing. Yeah, Jared, if you could look this, if you could look this up for me so you can get the, the kid's name, that would be great. Um, and he, so he drew this logo. And kids at school teased him and bullied, bullied him for not having a Vols t-shirt or not having like a college t-shirt, even though he drew it himself. And so when got out, it went viral on social media and uh, uh, sorry, word got out and it went viral on social media and uh, University of Tennessee heard about it and they have decided to send this little guy all sorts of Vols stuff. So I think that's really cool yes. that they're they're helping him out, and not only that, but now they have their own T-shirt with the logo he designed, and they are selling it. And all of the proceeds from the T-shirt go to an organization to stop bullying, which I think is great. They're putting their money where their mouth is. That's awesome. And I think and I think the T-shirt looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I do like too. If I'm I looking was, at it right now. Like if I was in the states, I would definitely order one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I like the color. I like that orange color. I've always, yes, I've always kind of been a, like a, a Tennessee fan, um, just because it's, I don't know, they, they haven't had the best sports teams, but I really like watching them. And I've always thought like, that's a cool color orange when I was a kid at least. And I didn't watch a ton of college sports. And so I think it's great. And I think it's really awesome that they are donating these proceeds to bullying. So Yes. So, yeah, in so the shout article out to I read mm-hmm. in the article I read he was unnamed. So shout out to the 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 kid. There we go. All right. The so kid. yeah, so those are my shout outs for they today. Call him the kid. Sorry. That's right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it's time to get into our namesake of this podcast, Jared, if you happen to yes. know what time it is. Idiom sayings. You know, I've heard some good ones in the wild recently. I'm just I'm never I'm never quick enough to like either somehow write it down somewhere. I just so picture maybe Jared eavesdropping in on people's conversations like at dinner or work. A lot of them like have been English ones, paper. to be fair. A lot of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just like within bushes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hop out of a bush with your little yeah. notepad and paper. I hear some. Uh, well, you know, uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, if you know what I mean. I just pop up. <laughs> Like, uh, could you elaborate on that? What does that mean? <laughs> Interesting. That is well said. Interesting. Hmm. And then right before you run off, you got to be like, untranslatable podcast, check it out. <laughs> yeah, then run away. Reviews, faster reviews. You betcha. Uh, my first one, though, is Danish. And, um, you know, it's funny that you said, uh, before you go, you said uh, untranslatable podcast, because mine is Mil de Moses. Which means? Think about it. Mil de Mo- Moses. Something of 
M- Moses. I- Mild Moses. Uh, oh, oh, milde. Oh, I thought I thought you were saying mil is one word. Oh, de of is, Mo- like of Moses kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I, I was gotcha. thinking. Okay, mild, mild Moses. Was Moses not? Mi- I guess he was. I don't know. It's been <laughs> a while since I've read the Bible. Um, milde Moses, mild Moses. Is this like a? I I don't even know where to begin. And how how does that relate to the untranslatable podcast? Well, let's put it this. Well, it doesn't. Well, it does because it's untranslatable. Uh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's um, it's not like a. It's not like a. Let me let me give you a clue by saying I'm not looking for like a explanation of a person. It's more of like a. Um, like you like it's more of like a. I don't know, but it's not. It's you're not. It's you don't. It's it's not a how. You, it's not like an explanation of someone else. Let me say that, and okay. maybe okay. You, maybe one would yell it. Maybe one would say it while sighing and and rubbing their forehead in disgust, or maybe someone would say it okay. while um, stubbing their toe, or maybe someone would say it while. Um, oh, is it is in, it like in, Jesus in, Christ? Is it like, a like Jesus Christ? Okay. Yes. Oh, I love yes. that. I love yes. that. Milda Moses. I'm going to start saying that. <laughs> that might need to become a drop, dude. Milda Moses. There we go. Well, that's uh, a, that's a, that's we a can good make one. that happen. I like that one, too. Yeah. I guess a good one. You know what they say in the Czech Republic? Uh, I do not. And I heard it all the time was, Jesus Maria. So uh, Jesus uh, Maria. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh-huh. a, that's, a, that's kind of a popular one here because it's like, there's like Jesus Christ obviously is very popular here, but right. then there's here, but then there's like, uh, G, like uh, Joseph, like, you know, the, someone, sometimes Maria they like name Joseph the whole, or, yeah. sometimes they like name the whole family. I don't, I don't know exactly how they do like Jesus, Joseph and Marie or something like that, but they'll something like name like the whole that, yeah. family. You know what I mean? Um, I also like, I also like the, uh, when people don't want to say Jesus Christ, so they'll say cheese and rice. It's oh like, yeah. Okay. Or cheese and crackers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Shut the yeah. front door. That's or geez, good I say geez a lot. Geez, right? Yeah. Oh, geez. Whenever I hear geez, though, now I always think of Rick and Morty because the character in Morty oh. in the show always goes, "Oh, geez, Rick." So <laughs> that's why, why that's I always think of That's kind of how I feel when I say it, though. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, Jared, I do have a couple Chinese ones for us today. Great. Um, are we I gonna think do I'll another be able to keep full, these going. Do, okay, I was going to ask. Are we doing another full, uh, full stint? In China, with just I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. One every yeah. episode. Yep, I'm gonna try okay. my best. Maybe I, I need it. to tone it down because I've been doing two. But uh, yeah, and I, th- I'm not sure if you've told me this one um, because it seemed familiar. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. I, I won't remember so, either. So we'll just say no. I have so because so, so, <laughs> someone listening to this so, has not heard that episode. So okay, so we'll give it a try. So it is, um, Hua. Hua shi tian tianzu, which means when a when drawing a snake, add a foot. When drawing a snake, add a foot. Where it's like you're just making stuff up. Um. Mm, or you're like exaggerating. Not quite. Not quite. So think about it, Jared. Do snake have feet? No, you're lying. Um, or like telling a story no. that's sort of like winding a tale that's but well, that's exaggerating still i i you know what i'll give you exaggerating i'll give you that mm, actually i don't like this i don't like this. i'll give it to you basically <laughs> it's to ruin the effect by adding something superfluous or basically adding something that's unnecessary oh uh, okay so it's kind of like embellishing say. embellishing sure i'll give you that. i think it's yeah. more embellishing yeah. than exaggerating even though those are I very agree similar, with I would say. I would agree with that. I think it can also be used as like overdoing something as well. Right. You're so that's why a- I said I'll kind of give you a little too much yeah. color onto a story or too much like right. taking a little too many right. liberties with uh, what actually happened. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm gonna. My next one is also Danish, and it's uh, Ehegnet or Ehegnet. I don't know how they do their H's. Ehegnet. I feel like they pronounce them. So that's I something don't. No, I don't. No? No, 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 no. What is it? That was impressive. You made it seem like you actually knew Danish. In the fence. Oh, not even close. Okay. No. Um, in the fence. Is that like uh, like we have the English untranslatable between a rock and a hard place? 
No. I can give you so an example. So you're not in like a... Yeah, go for it. So I went to a concert last night, and um, there was a... The doors opened a lot later than they said they were going to open, and so there mm-hmm. was kind of a long line, you know, wrapped around the... Uh, Detroit has such beautiful, like, concert venues, because there's so many... Uh, like theaters that used to be like really classy theaters that now they just use for mm-hmm. all sorts of uh, concerts Was it at the and Fox? stuff. Uh, Masonic Temple, which I've never been oh, to. Oh, nice. But also okay. a very beautiful theater. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, so, you know, as I was getting there, we were walking around to the back of the line, sort of walking around and, you know, walking around the building to where the line, you know, following the line. And um, this guy, uh, almost in slow motion, just falls over uh, in behind me. Oh, like I, I sort of oh, step out of. Oh, is it to of, be really drunk? There you go. Ooh, all right, all right. But yeah, so he fence. literally. Now that I, now that I totally forgot about this, but he literally just like it was so funny because it, it was slow motion and like I sort of just like <laughs> saw like so I, I looked over and I was with my girlfriend and she looked over at him too and I was just like oh he's definitely about to fall and I just like um, sort of sidestepped and moved forward and he just in slow motion kind of fell to the ground and uh, his buddy was like uh, how's it going there buddy <laughs> <laughs> oh then- that's funny I was about to keep walking, and I actually, and uh, my girlfriend, who's usually more of the um, more of the oh, I hope let's check to make sure this person is okay, kind of person. Right. And I'm like, it's just a drunk person. Come on, come on. <laughs> right. And um, luckily, she left. Although today we did see someone, uh, this little kid, in front of our uh, like on the corner of our street, fall, and it looked like broke his leg or broke his ankle. He was Ooh. with his dad though, and someone pulled over and like I think drove him, but. Okay. It was about to Dang. Us, apparently. Dang. Uh, all well, right. Do you have another well, Jared, uh, I, I Chinese got, one I for I got us? one more for today because I'm okay. going to save the, the other Chinese one for next week. I yes. have a French one for you again. I don't know why I've oh. been on a French kick lately. And yeah. it is, uh, en avoir ra le bol, which means to have a bowl full of it. To have a bowl full of it. Is mm-hmm. that like to is that like to eat shit as we would say here in the in the United States? Not not like quite. To trip and fall not on quite. your face essentially. No. I could see why you would think that, but no. Right. To have or is a it to bowl like have like it. is it like to have like a, you're really busy and you're like juggling a lot of activities and you're sort of like overwhelmed? Mm, I wouldn't say it's being overwhelmed. Angry? Angry? There we F- go. Frustrated? There we go. Basically. It's kind of like we say, like, have it, what, have it up to your eyeballs? Or, no, sorry, that's yeah, just like, I'm busy. So, sort of like people essentially... Up to here with it. Yeah, there you right? go. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what which, I was about to say. Which is, yeah, like, you're, you're getting sick of something and you're losing like, your patience and my, you're getting my, Yeah, like, my, my temper levels are at this, this point, and what I'm signifying right. is that's a very high point. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. I'll well, Jared, do you have any next, others, for, or should we... I'll save okay, mine, too, because we got a... Oh, sorry, my, I just sort of... We're fine, but I just sort of... Okay. We do have a lot to talk about, though, Push my table out of the way, yeah. And so I would like to discuss um, some good German ones, because German is a... Yeah? Explain what loan words are, Mr. Teacher, please, sir. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Getting too excited about the topic already. (laughs) So, yeah. So loan words are words in a language, in one language, that are then kind of loaned, loaned, I'm using air quotes here, um, to Mm. another language... But a lot of times these words don't always keep the same meaning um, and yes. they can be used in different contexts. And that's mm-hmm. why I'd like to talk about German because there's some really funny ones that are, you also hear the term um, in, like, in like the field of like second languages or, or linguistics as um, anglicisms yeah. or German anglicismus, which is basically just an, a word that comes from English that has become a part of the language there. And now and French doesn't have a ton of them. Spanish has some of them, and German definitely has plenty of them. Although Fr- the French do say metro for uh, for their train for their like underground system. Does that come from English? I don't know. <laughs> I have no, I have no idea either. <laughs> now, what's funny though too is I I do want to mention too before we get into some German ones is mm-hmm. that I had a lot of difficulty because English has taken so many words for other languages. Yes. When I was doing my Bing searches, um, <laughs> using Bing because Google doesn't work over here. You betcha. Um, uh, using That's my Bing you can't searches. That's anything. <laughs> right. Um, 
<laughs> but what I would use my Bing searches, it would be, oh I would get, you know, a bunch of hits on foreign words in English, but not the other the same, way around. I had the same So struggles. I had to use, I had to use words like loan words in my search. And then I started looking up Spanglish. Yes. Danglish, which is German and English. Chinglish, which is Chinese and English. Didn't find a ton of terms. I have a couple of them. Um, and then also I found Singlish, which would be Singaporean and English. But Singlish, a lot of them are more, they use, they use the uh, Singaporean language with English phrases. Yes. So they'll have an English word and then use Singapore. So I didn't include those for today. Like um, I, remember but an untr- mm-hmm. I remember an untranslatable I had that was Lobang King. But anyway, also I'm with you. I understand mm-hmm. all your struggles. I had all the same struggles. What I did was I... Uh, did the same thing, but I typed in loan words. I, I did. I chose specific. It's easier if you chose specific languages. I noticed that too. Right. Luckily, yep. we don't we don't collaborate on on our research. Probably should, but seems like it's working <laughs> out because I chose Japanese <laughs> right. and French. Oh, cool. Perfect. Great. So and we'll I have some mixed English. ones too from some various languages. So uh, I have a quick question for you before we get into this. I know sure. I keep cutting sure. you off here. But um, I love how excited you seem to be to get into this. But I have a quick question. I know mm-hmm. we're talking about loan words, um, but I want to talk about how we use loan words or how I use loan words. When I was learning German, uh, oftentimes what I would do um, would be would re- replace, if I couldn't think of what the German word is, I would just use mm-hmm. an English word and sort of conjugate it as if it were like Germanize it for, for where it would fit into the sentence. Like if it was a verb and I'd be like, right. I would be like, I'm, uh, I, 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 I like packed my bags last night for my trip right. tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> right. Which is um, actually correct in German, which is kind of funny. That's true. That was a terrible example because that's yeah. actually what it would be. <laughs> right. But, but you can um, get away with that a lot in English. You really yes, can. Yes, that's true. That's true. But I, I would use that in German as sort of like, like just to fill the gaps. And usually, I mean, right. usually it would work, especially since I guess a lot of German speakers tend to be good at English. All right. Give me right. your Danglish. Have you ever I, done I will that, tell by the way? You, or are you I will, disciplined for course. that? Of course. Of course I do that. Okay. Everybody I feel like you need who, to discipline who learns a second language. No, I do that too. Okay. Um, sometimes I do it to be funny as well. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because sometimes, like, if I'm with friends who speak English and German, sometimes there's, like, an English word that just, like... It, oh, that, like, we, just fits it's, perfectly? It's, like, an fits better, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Now, I will tell you, though, Jared, that the thing that you have been doing is... Um, is actually what a lot of soldiers do in Germany because a lot of them live on base, so they don't really have to learn the language, but some of them stay there long enough where they do pick up some bits and American pieces of German. Yes, American soldiers okay. Okay. stationed in Germany. And so they actually, what's funny is they actually call this Germlish, which is Germlish. German with, with sprinklings of English in, in it, whereas Danglish right. would be uh, Deutsch or German with English sprinkled in it so right so, so now so before, English you're primarily speaking german right and then and the using other one some primary, english words the other ones correct the other okay right so so now i do want to give there according to thoughtco.com there are five different definitions t-h-o-t of danglish which uh uh T H O U G O U G H T. oh i just got that joke oh that's funny um <laughs> Didn't know thoughts were so into language learning, but you never know. <laughs> Anyways, there are five definitions of Danglish, uh, and, and I would agree with these. So Danglish number one is the use of English words in German with an, inte- with an attempt to incorporate into German grammar. And a lot of these have to do with more newfound terms that like technology terms, right? So Germans will use like the verb downloaden, to download. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Now, you could say herunterladen, which would be the proper German term, but most Germans nowadays that I know will say downloaden. And we'll For example, ich means. habe den file gedownloaded. Mm-hmm. Um, or here's the tricky thing, though. With German, they have what you call a separable verb, where the oh, prefix yeah. of the verb is separated from the base of the verb or the stem. Which, if so, that was a German word, mm-hmm. it would be a split up one. Right. Well... Well, yeah. So you could either say "Ich habe den Fall gedownloaded," which to my ear does sound strange. Um, the separable way you would say that was "Ich habe den Fall downloaded," which is also how <laughs> you would you say. Use? I would probably use the "downloaded." 
Okay. If I was using okay, a past okay. tense. Which is interesting because um, it's also herunter geladet uh, or whatever. So it, Geladen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, geladen. So it would be a, uh, like a separable verb in German if you use right. the proper uh, download right. term. Right. Or another funny example, too. A lot of this is like business English, technology English. You yes. see this very often in advertising. I think in Germany, like it's cool to use some English words. Um, in your advertisements. So here's another yes. one. Like there was a there was some I think article the same or a lot advertisement. Of other, uh, cultures, you know. Cause I mean, you see that here because it's foreign. You s- yeah. Right. You see that here in China, but a lot of the times the translations are incorrect or the spelling's wrong or something. It's kind of you funny. You see it here I, in the U.S. with like French and Italian and Spanish and stuff. That's true. That is true. But here's another kind of funny one that was like on a commercial or something. It was, and I'll translate um, the English after I say the German. Heute haben wir ein Meeting mit den Consultants. So today we have a meeting <laughs> with the consultants. Half yes. of that sentence you probably could understand because of the nouns in there, meeting and consultants. Mm-hmm. Now another one, so that was uh, Denglish number one. So uh, an attempt to incorporate them in German grammar. Denglish number two is the excessive use of English words, phrases, or slogans in German advertising, which I just mentioned. So for example, Lufthansa prominently displayed the f- slogan, in English, there's no better way to fly. And they didn't have a German translation. Interesting. So, why yeah. do they do, now, why do you think what what do you think is the thought process behind doing that? Because obviously millions of dollars in marketing money went into that sp- right. that uh, <laughs> those words. So I think there's two reasons, Jared. I think okay. one that Germany is an economic powerhouse globally, especially in the right. EU. And I think especially they if you're talking tend about an airline to use, too, I guess. Right. And I think they do a lot of, you know, English has become the lingua franca of business. And right. so that's one reason. I think another reason is there's a lot of international people that live in Germany. I mean, when Jared and I visited Berlin, we heard just as much English spoken as we did German. Yeah. Um, I mean, there sure. were many Maybe places we went where it was easier to speak English than German because the, the, right. the people working at the places weren't German. Right. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that's the reasoning behind it. And I think it adds this different kind of cool factor just because it's foreign. Mm. I don't know. Me as a German learner, I would love to see these in German. But, hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? So another <laughs> one, though, that <laughs> German uh, funny, though, is cool in the U.S., like the language, I mean. Right, right, which is kind of a bummer because it's a great yeah. language. But anyways, the third uh, example of Denglish or definition is the influences of English spelling and punctuation on... Uh, the German language. So a lot of times in German, they don't have an apostrophe over the S for a possessive. So if we had like Karl's Schnell Imbiss, a Schnell Imbiss is like a fast food stand over there. So in German, they would have Karl's Schnell Imbiss and Karl's would just be an S with no apostrophe. In English, we would put an S with an apostrophe. And we're starting to see this more and more in restaurants in Germany where they have like a name or something. Um, they'll have ah, an apostrophe. Okay. What's and funny is sometimes... Right, right. That's oh, not that a natural sense. thing in their language. Now, it's the probably funny a hard thing, thing about to put that, on though, a sign, too. Right. Well, but they are starting to put that on signs and stuff, oh, I, oh, is what sorry, I'm saying. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood you. Yeah. Now, yeah. the funny thing is, sometimes there have been a couple instances where it'll be incorrect. Like, it'll be like, Maggie's fruits and vegetables, and fruits will have an apostrophe s and vegetables for some reason will have an apostrophe s so oh. that's just an error there's no <laughs> yeah. you know so that's kind of funny everything belongs um, to everyone right now i don't mean to offend you jared because i don't oh, think this no. is true for you but this is just coming from the website and I, I guess in theory i would be also taking a shot at myself as well because i do this too but the uh, example of danglish number four is mixing of english and german vocabulary in sentences by english speaking ex well i guess well by english speaking expats who, expats whose german skills are weak now i, I would disagree kid. with this one i right. wasn't i would disagree with this one job Right. I mean, I would disagree with this one, though, because I don't think that... I think, yes, to some extent, it could be because someone's German skills are weak and they don't Mm -hmm. know the words. Like, when you and I were beginning German, we definitely did this, and that was because our skills are weak. But I think there also becomes... a school where, like, everyone's German and English skills were mixed as well. Right. Exactly. And so... But I think there comes a point in anybody's learning level where you pick up these subtle nuances and when you're with someone who you can code switch where you speak two languages kind of fluidly and you switch between the two, that's when I don't think it's a matter of skills being weak. It's using both languages in a very communicative and expressive way. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so you know I would rather say um, ich habe am Wochenende uh, uh, relaxed I relaxed on the weekend instead of gechillt uh, I, I say gechillt all gechilled. the time that's a good one yeah and Germans mm -hmm. use those I've heard yeah. Germans use that no one you know. would ever be confused by that right and a lot of these I think are, are more new terminology it's kind of cool now the funny thing yeah, though because Germans, everyone is also social media these days too right Right. Yeah. Like ich hab ich hab das Foto geliked. You know, I liked the photo. Uh, referring Do to like Germans Facebook or Instagram or, or something. Hey, German. I don't know. That's a that's a Do great question. Yeah, get or at GIF. us. Or I'm not hey, sure. That's... Forget the. I mean, not to forget the Germans. The Germans too. We have people from a whole bunch, a whole bunch of different countries. In your country, uh, or language, which, which you know, whatever you know, it would tell us what language you speak. Do you say GIF or JIF? Country language, GIF, JIF. Yeah, I'm curious about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's some debate in the States about which one is correct. But anyway, What do you say? I say uh, GIF. Me too. I say GIF. Um, I hope we didn't just uh, <laughs> give it away to some of our listeners. Anyways, so the <laughs> yeah, other... Yeah, we shouldn't have other, said anything. Right. The other one, though, for Denglish number five is the coining of faux or fake or incorrect English words that are not found in English or are used with a different meaning than in German. So for example, Jared, do you know what der Dressmann is? Or Dressmann, Dressmann. maybe. I have no idea. It's kind of ironic because this person usually is not like always a dressed. It's a male oh. model. Oh, a male okay. model. Uh-huh. Interesting. You know what der Smoking is, right? I do, of course. And that's used, I think, in a couple different languages, too. Yeah. It's um, used in French, I believe it. That is a so I know it comes from the term smoking jacket, but is yep. it used just to explain a blazer, or is it still like that sort I think it's of a tuxedo. Uh, like Hugh Hef? Oh, okay, I think not it's like a tuxedo. one of those Hugh Hefner mm -hmm. like vel red no. velvet. Okay, no, <laughs> yeah, I think I it's think a tuxedo. When I picture a smoking jacket, but right. a smoking I specifically is like a tuxedo jacket. Right, and I think they okay. use that in Czech as well. I could be wrong, but Czech listeners get at me, correct me if I'm wrong. Languages. Yeah, I think it's pretty. So, Jared, in I, I got another one for you. What is the talkmaster? Mm. Sorry, I for got you reason, right as you were taking a sip of water. The talkmaster. For, talk for some reason, I want to say like a Walkman or something, but what is this? It's a talk show host. Oh, talkmaster. That talk makes sense. Talk show host. It's yeah, like, talk it's, show it's, host. It's sort of like the. Like the host and like the, uh, what do you call like the um, master of ceremonies, essentially. Oh, yep. Or like a moderator. Yeah. 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 Like the talk master right. of ceremonies. Right. Talk and some, some, like I said, there are a lot of, the funny thing is too, is in some languages they use loan words because there is no word in the language. But for right. German, we don't see this. There are a lot of German words, like they use the word das meeting where they do have the word, oh, I don't remember if it's der die yeah. das, der Termin. I think it's der Termin, which is a meeting. I think it's der as well. Right. Oh, what's yeah. egg? I, um, I mean, egg is I, but what's the... Das I. Das I, das. okay. Because mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I was asked the other day, how do you say egg? And I knew like, you know, D-I-A, -ah, because we had multiple eggs. Right. But uh, I was like, oh, I can't, I couldn't think of the... Uh, das the, I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's really interesting just the differences in, in German... In English, yes. um, and so Jared, I'm gonna test. I'm gonna test your Denglish skills today. I got a list okay. of a bunch of words. I'm gonna okay. test you, and some of these are easy, some of these are hard. So we'll, well start hold off on, easy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh huh. I like this. I like where your head's at. I'm. I, I, I can. I, can I simultaneously test you? I have some loan words from Japanese. So can we kind of course. do like back and forth a little bit? Of course, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Go ahead. So Jared, my first. English word for you or Anglicismus uh, of German is de air condition. I have no idea. Are you I, being serious? I, uh, no, c come on. Air conditioning, <laughs> obviously. You're there we go. Heating there we go. And, uh, heating and uh, heat. What? What's HVAC stand for? Heating, ventilation, heating. and air conditioning? Yeah, probably. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. My first one, and uh, once again, I'm minor Japanese, should mm -hmm. be easy. Because uh, we're very familiar with these. Maiku. Maiku. Microphone. Very good, yes. Uh, great time to okay. take a sip, Chad. Great, right. great time. Right. Uh, <laughs> my, my next one for you is Der Beamer. 
BMW? Nope. Oh, okay. That's what well, we're saying in the States. <laughs> right. Beamer. You find this in a classroom, Jared. Oh, a oh I like a projector. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, my next one is a Supa. Is that super or soup? Well, super is part of it, but okay. that's sort of a shorthand for something that has that in it. For Superman? Example, bef- before we started... No, this is something that's real. Before we started... Um, <laughs> Wait, you're telling re- me Superman's not real? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This, I should have warned the kids. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, I, before we started recording, you mentioned that today uh, you have to go to this place. Oh, supermarket. Yes, super. Oh, supermarket. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, in German, it's supermarkt, but I would say that one's a cognate and not a loan word. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Can I give you one more just because it's, it's on a, in a similar vein? Okay, so keep sure. that in mind. I gave you that. This one okay. is de pato. Another one? Say it again. De pato. De pato. And so keep in mind, it sounds similar to supa. It's sort of a shortened term like supa. And supa was supermarket. De pato. Right. Think the mall. Think the mall. Where you park Pata. at the mall before you go to the place. Oh, the parking? Hot... Is it parking? No, 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 no. no. You go into the mall, and uh, there's Hot Topic and Foot Locker, but there's also those giant stores oh, at the end. Oh, department store. There you go. Department you go. store. Interesting. You the Pato. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Um, well, Jared, if the untranslatable podcast doesn't work for us, maybe we can become the call boy. <laughs> that's hilarious is that like a gigolo essentially yes sir that is a gigolo okay. uh-huh. <laughs> you betcha um my next one is uh ira su su ira suto ira suto and so i hate to i hate to now i hate to sort of pro- propel this this but um keep in mind also that with many uh, um, speakers of asian languages like uh, japanese i think this is maybe some chinese or korean suffer from this too they struggle d- deciphering r's and l's and l's yes so when you hear ira suto think first of all think uh you know how that would how how what the americans would say or english speakers would say would be a little challenging to them hmm what is it? I have no idea. Uh, illustration. Oh, okay. Il asuto. Okay. Il asuto. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, Jared, um, also, if Untranslatable Podcast doesn't work out, we could become Der Hotel Boy. Is that just like a, uh, like a um, bell boy, would we call it? Yeah, here? bell boy. Very okay. good. Uh-huh. With people that like carry mm-hmm. up your bags and, and whatnot right. at a hotel. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, my next one, um, if this podcast doesn't work out and we do go with Callboy, I don't know about uh, <laughs> you, but I would recommend some Miku for myself before I hit those streets. Some Miku. Miku. Cover McDonald's. up my... Uh, McDonald's. No no, 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 no. Remember I told you that sometimes when I go get my hair cut, um, my... Um, my barber cuts my beard with the razor, which I like because he's good at it. Uh-huh. But uh, it gives me ingrown hairs because I have very curly hair on my face. And uh, sometimes when you get those ingrown hairs, you get little bumps. And if I'm going to hit those streets, I'm gonna li- I'd like to cover up those bumps with some Miku. Is it like a band Makeup. Makeup. Oh, makeup. Okay. Makeup. Oh, that makes <laughs> sense. Okay. Okay. So, Jared, what is... Do you know what der Gully is? Gully? Is that like a swamp? It is a manhole or a drain. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Th- that makes sense if you drain. just sort of like... Th- that makes uh, sense if you sort of just like straight up... Um, yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. I get that. All right. My next one is... Excuse me. I'm drinking sparkling water, which now I understand. Probably not the best idea. Uh... I'm a futo. Amateur Keep in mind, football player? Here in the United States of America, it is currently September. Okay. Popular time here. A lot of uh, red blood. Oh, American, American football. Yeah, right? there you go. You betcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Well, so 
I have now I have some um, Danglish that comes from ads. So this will be nothing for you to decipher, Jared, but um, just goes to show you the prevalence of English in slogans in German advertisements. So TCOM has business flexibility. Uh, wait, say TCOM has business flexibility? What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, T-Systems. Their slogan is business flexibility. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. Nokia's is connecting people. Yes. Bayer Healthcare is science for a better life. But um, I, I think, I think for example, mm-hmm. with that connecting people thing, mm-hmm. there is uh, obviously a thought put into it, but like even like you're an international company and obviously you're not, you're not uh, headquartered in the United States or an English speaking country, but just the very nature of connecting people. It's like, of course we should do this and like uh, arguably one of the most connecting languages in the world. Right. And my, my last one for you, I really like because it's kind of funny because it rhymes. And this is from O2, which is a phone company. And it's O2 can do. O2 can do. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's short, sweet, rhymes. Sounds good. Comes right off the tongue. So those are some of my Denglish phrases for you, Jared. Um, All right. I do want to give you one, though, that we've talked about, I think, before on the podcast, which I think is really funny because it sounds English, but it's not an English word, which is das Handy, which is a yes. cell phone. Yes, but uh, would, would would they they stole that from? Well, I don't want to say stole. That's aggressive. They uh they borrowed that from the from English. No, Handy? I, this was no. This was one of those false Danglish. Oh, where it's, I got you. I got you. Were taken you. from English and used in a different way. And there are a lot of examples you. of these. Unfortunately, I don't have any more pulled up. But that's like one of the best ones I can think of. I have a fun example in French of what I was talking about earlier. Sometimes you, you, you are learning a language and you, you learn a language by immersing yourself in it, ideally. And so say right. you're speaking with a group of people that are on various levels and you forget a word. And you're like, oh, I want to talk about boycotting to my French friend, but I can't remember mm-hmm. how to say it. So I'm just going to say, je boycotte, and just hope mm-hmm. that he understands what I'm saying. And it turns out, boycotte... Uh, which you know, my French is beautiful. I know, is the um, that's the infinitive of boycott in French, boycotte. Oh, interesting. Okay, so yeah. that one you can get away with. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it literally is just sort of adding their conjugation to uh, an English word. Okay. I like that. Interesting. Yeah, I do too. I do too. That's cool. What other French ones do you have for us? A lot of the French ones are just straight up English words they use. So it's not okay. like any sort of, so it's just like they use vintage, which kind of okay. makes sense. That kind of makes sense mm-hmm. to me. Uh, streaming, Zintage. streaming, I think is probably a big one that I, I wonder if a lot of languages are using. I would imagine, I would imagine the majority of the technology ones that come from the States, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Interview, marketing, it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, shopping. That's an yep. interesting one. Do they say shopping in uh, in German? They do. Shoppen. But is, ich gehe jetzt shoppen. Is there a more German, uh, dare I of say, course. shopping Einkaufen. word? Einkaufen. Oh, Einkaufen. there you go. There right. you go. Yeah, but they're just mm-hmm. like, no, we say shopping too. Right. Um, bestseller. I think, I think back to shopping though, Jared, I think it's because Americans are the best shoppers. And that's why <laughs> nobody can live in excess quite like the Americans. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Bestseller. I think they use that in German too. I've seen that okay. even on on billboards and stuff here in China too. Um, Interesting. I think yeah. it's just. I, I think it is just sort of like a. It is such sort of like an omnipresent phrase at this point. At this point, that right. it, uh, I understand that even if you don't know mm. what it means, you know what most. A lot of people might not know what bestseller means, but they know what best means. Right. And they're like, well, that's good. <laughs> um, okay. So those are some French ones I have. Okay. Uh, do you I, have any I have more some you Italian want to get ones. Yeah, I have some Italian okay. ones for you. Um, now, what's interesting about the Italian ones is many of the English words used in Italian are more British than American in meaning. So, so an auto stop, Jared, is when you hitchhike in Italy. Or a auto box stop. lockup is a garage. Well, that makes sense. You stop mm-hmm. a... You stop a car. A car, right? 
Then you have uh, camping, which we use as a verb in English, but camping yes. in Italian means the campsite. Dancing means a dance hall. An Eskimo would be like a parka, like a winter jacket. Um, footing means jogging. Uh, golf jumper is a jersey. Let's see here. Oh, that's uh, interesting. So even if mm-hmm. it's like a soccer jersey or football jersey? Right. Well, it's just a golf? jersey. It says jersey. I don't know if that. Okay. I don't know if the fo- the football or soccer jerseys are different. Um, next one right. is a slip, which are underpants or knickers. 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 Uh, <laughs> smoking, dinner jacket or tuxedo. Slip this is the one's same just as French, free. I believe, as well. I believe that's like a lady's underwear. I think so too. Yeah. Um, they definitely use it in British English because I've I've never heard it in American English, and I was talking to um, the straight a friend of mine from, slip there, from, from uh, Lassie. Uh, Right. Oh, sorry, that was right. awful. Because I was talking to a friend of mine from South Africa, and she said she said slip, and I I first thought she meant like slips, like your, like I thought she was talking about like flip like flops, old man slippers, or or that exactly you wear around the house. <laughs> exactly. I need to get a pair while I'm here. By the way, I don't have. Yeah, a you pair don't have yet. any anymore, um, do you? I don't. No, because I, I wore them out. But the next one, Jerry, the is just for you. I think you'll like bad, this one. So, they smell bad. So they like they they a cold smells a little too well. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, anyways, a spider, Jared. Do you know what a spider is in Italian? Ling, ling, lingis? Mm, Any idea? No, no. It is a, it's a convertible car. A spider. Oh, S- oh, 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 yeah. S-P-Y-D-E-R. Yes, this I did know that. It's spelled like a spider, though. S-P-I-D-E-R. But maybe that's a misspelling from uh, the no, source sometimes got this I, I, I'd spell them both. I guess it depends on the car. You can spell it like with a Y okay. as well. I, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I, didn't yeah. Even th- I didn't even put that together, but I did know that. Listen, I know right. car stuff. Don't doubt you me, do. people. You do. You most definitely do. Um, all right, Jared. So I'll <laughs> end us today, though, with some interesting Spanglish words. Okay. Um, since you are learning Spanish and I speak un poquito español. So mm. some of these are verbs. So you have machar, which any ideas what machar would be? To match. Very good. And the Ooh. correct Spanish Parada. alternative would be combinar, to combine, I guess. Yes. Then you have um, hanguear. Any idea what hanguear means? Say hanguear. Uh-huh. That's not hungry, because that nope. sounds like a verb. Nope. It's a to verb. To hang right? out. To hang oh. out. Hanguear. And oh. now the Spanish alternative would be pasar el rato. Soy hango. Sorry. Uh, uh-huh. Pas- oh, I got uh, you. That's like how you uh-huh. actually say it properly. Right. Okay. El, el parking is the parking lot. Parking really is a common one. To- yep. Yep. Yeah, you see it in German. In- well, German, Probably. they actually do say parkplatz still in a lot of places. But right. you see it in French, too. I think but in it's Italian also common as well. Because it's just like a P, too. So a lot of these right. places is usually just like right. a sign of a P. I think it's right. probably a lot of lot of countries. I would I would agree with that. And then you also have the verb parquear, to park. Mm-hmm. And the the Spanish alternative would be estacionar. Uh, then you have rufo, which would be roof. Chequear, okay. to check. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, creepy, to creep on someone. <laughs> so they use creepy. I like that. Creepy. Uh huh. Um, el top, which is like the top or the best. Germans will also say that. Um, yes. I really like when Germans will say, bist du fit? That's like, is everything good? But it's like, are yes. you fit? That one's kind of fun. Fatig. That's another, that's an untranslatable. Yeah. Isn't it? Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Like done. It's kind of like you do this with your hands. You kind of yeah, rub yeah, your yeah. hands together and you say fix and fatig. Yeah. All finished. El shopping. Once again, we have shopping again because we are the best at shopping. <laughs> el locker, uh, which is a locker. El casillero in Spanish. Um, hamburger, which should be hamburguesa, which is still pretty close to English, I would say. But hamburguesa. Hamburger. Uh, you made that sound more Italian, but yeah. All right, you're um, doing Sp- Sp- Spanglish right, right now. Um, let's see here. Mandar un inbox, which is to, believe it or not, to send a uh, Facebook message, which is interesting. Oh, you send an uh, inbox? Right, exactly. Let's see if I can pull up any other Spanish ones. Googlear. In German, they yes. also have Google. Uh, to Google something. Right. Marqueta, B 
because for a supermarket, uh, the correct word is uh, supermercado. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Also pretty similar. Right. I would say so as well. And I think I think that's uh, last one I'll give you is uh, rentar to rent. Yeah. I mean, we um, can go on so forever. Yeah. We're doing this. Right. There's right. a lot of them. There We're are. We're only doing a few languages. Exactly. Exactly. It's just interesting so maybe to we see can what words. Time too. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I think a lot of words too. It'd be interesting to look at loan words in hip hop music in other languages. That would take a lot more yes. research. And I'm sure a lot of them would just be cuss words or like slang Drug in American hip hop. Gun references. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, but I think that does lead us nicely, Jared, into our song of the pod today, even though yeah. there really isn't very much of loan words. It's a great song. It's called Dida by Die Fantastischen Vier, or in German, The Fantastic Four. And Dida yes. means like, you her, there? In this case, like her there. Right. Um, but it really means like that there or it mm. there. Um, yeah, but it, the song, the the lyrics are all about like these guys are talking about this girl, and then they like see her like over there. They're like Dida, like the one there. Um, and it's kind of a funny song, but I'm curious, what are your thoughts on it, Jared? I like it. They're uh, they're good rappers. It mm-hmm. seems very like sort of of its time. It seems like what is that early '90s, mid '90s, or something like I that. I think so. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, you could definitely tell it from the music video. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but I like it. It's, um, it's, I think they're actually like, I think they're legit. Like it's good rap. And, uh, and, um, I only listened to it a couple times, but, uh, it, it's, it's, it seems like a good song for someone, uh, wanting to learn German because it's, they're very sort of clear with their words. This isn't a uh, year newfangled m- mumble, mumble rap, rap that rap. these kids yeah. seem to be into these days. Right. And the music itself is great. It's kind of upbeat. It has yes. uh, like some good horn sections in it as well, yes. which you is love great. The horn it's sections. off there. Yeah, and it's off the album Fia Gewint or Four uh, Winds. And uh, yeah, the lyrics are really funny as well. They're talking about this girl, and then I think by the end of the song, they realize like they're seeing the same girl, and they're both, even though they're both seeing the same girl, and they're like. They're like they realize that but they also realize that she's seeing another guy because she's not free uh. on Fridays, <laughs> and they see her with the guy on a Friday or, uh. so, or something along those lines. It's right. really funny. It's really clever. I'm listening to it right now just to yeah, and they're just describing this girl, you know, and and like talking about it, like kind of like how guys will when they meet a new girl and they're talking to their buddies, you know. Um, and it's really funny. Like one of them's bragging, like he bought her a new wardrobe. The other oh. one brags, like he <laughs> took her to Thailand. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just a really funny song. It's really clever lyrically. It has great music, a really upbeat sound to it. And as you said, Jared, definitely an awesome song if you're trying to learn German. Um, and I think German does lend itself really well to hip hop. Um, there's a yes. lot of good rhyme schemes and things in German. And the fact that you can also combine words in German. Um, also lends itself to hip hop music as well. So check that out on our YouTube channel. Yeah. I think German is good too because there's not like a whole lot of variety in how and how words are set up in German or structured in German. Right. And so it's easy. I think it's easier to, maybe not easier, but it's a very easy, not very, I don't see, I hate to say very easy, but you know what I mean? Like it seems like it's a good language for sort of putting together uh, rhymes or cadences right i would say instead of saying it's easier i would say it easily lends itself lends to the itself. creation of yeah yeah i would agree with you though I, I i know what you're saying jared absolutely i'm not a yeah. politician with my words like you <laughs> i would rather be a teacher with my words than a politician but what can i say <laughs> um anyways the song is dida by die fantastische fear check it out on our youtube channel untranslatable podcast and we hope you enjoy. So next up, Jared, it is time for my Chinese word of the pod. And yes. it is, uh, j- uh, let me think of the tone here. Ji shu. Ji shu. Okay. Because it's a falling tone. Is. It means technology. Because a lot technology. of words related to technology are loan words from English. So that's why I chose that one for today. My Jishu. Spanish word? Mm-hmm is um la palabra which means the word oh i should have known that that was thought that was very fitting since we're here talking about words 
That is very fitting. That's for yes. sure. La palabra, very nice. palabra ang, uh, ing, anglais. There we go. Okay. English word. Well, well, Jared, I I got some jokes for you or some puns. So here okay. we go. I got two of them for you today. What do you call a dinosaur with an extensive vocabulary? Maybe you know this one. Mm, I don't know this one. A thesaurus. Oh. oh. Yeah, okay. Okay. What's the... Um, okay. Yeah. No, go ahead. What's Don't worry the... about it. Nope, oh, I can't oh. even think of it. There's <laughs> okay. another sort of book similar to a thesaurus. That's not a thesaurus, but I can't even... Not, and obviously not a dictionary is what I'm talking about, but there's like right. another... I thesaurus. feel like it starts with like an R or something, but who cares? It's Keep not going. a glossary. Now you, no. I'm not sure. Now you got me thinking about it. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Um, anyways, um, all right, Jared, do you want to pun about bakeries or about beards? I'll let you choose. Uh, beards, since, um, you know, <laughs> since I was, I was trying to give Jared a compliment before we started recording everybody <laughs> about his beard, and he thought I was trying to roast him for context for why Jared uh, picked I this one. I forgot that wasn't on the podcast. <laughs> it wasn't, and I don't think we started recording uh, the Skype video either, but anyways. I was trying to keep that private. I'm going to cut that out just so people oh, don't even there we know. Go. No, um, so here we go. I'll and take this, it back this pun, to bakeries. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm giving you the beard one now, Jared. That was your gut instinct, so you got to go with your gut. So here we go, Jared. I didn't like my beard at first, but it grew on me. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That was not that's bad. I one. like it. And I have decided, Jared, I was going to keep my beard shorter while I'm here to have a more professional look. And I decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm growing it out again. I like it longer. Many freguista. Exactly. So I'm going to grow it out longer. But it doesn't Anyways, get cold Jared, in winters there, does it? Not that that has any, really anything to do with your decision. It, I think it does, but there's not really much snow. Um, okay. But yeah. Anyways. But it's not going to get down to like Michigan temperatures either. Probably like it's not. not. Be I highly doubt in it. In single I digits probably. It. Right. So time for our quote of the pod. And I would say to wrap up this episode, the key here with these loan words from English into other languages is be very aware of the differences in pronunciation, if you can, like with the Japanese ones that Jared gave us. They might be hard for you to decipher at first. So try to put you yourself in the shoes of those language speakers yes. and the difficulties they might have with certain pronunciations. The other thing, though, too, is be very aware of the differences in meaning with some of them, right? Um, like cowboy in German is a gigolo, for example. So be aware mm -hmm. of some of these, uh, you know, kind of things that get lost in translation or develop a completely different meaning when using English in a foreign language. So just be aware of those. It's always important to have some cultural sensitivity and awareness as well. So I agree, Chad. I think that's key. So I'm keep well that in said. mind when you want to use your, um, either your Spanglish, your Denglish, your, I don't know, would you say Jinglish for Japanese and English? I'm not sure what the correct terminology yeah, would be. Franklish. Franklish as well. <laughs> so yeah. So keep that in mind when you use those. So we hope you've enjoyed this episode and you've learned a couple new loan words today that you, you can betcha. whip out in a conversation at your next soiree or uh, ice cream social or whatever social gathering you kids are into nowadays. We yes. hope you've enjoyed this episode. You've learned some new loan words. We appreciate your support greatly here at the Untranslatable Podcast. And as we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, Yakuyame, which is gracias and shusha. Sure, sure.